Look at this. Can you believe it? Wow. I mean, this is incredible. Amazing. Smug, welcome to the Nixon Library. Thank you so much for Absolutely. having me. This has been like a lifelong dream. Well, uh, I mean, this, this is where is we beautiful. make dreams come true. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so today, we get to have the full tour, right? We do. Yeah. And y'all are lucky. You get to join us for a tour of the entire library just for you. Your private tour. Thank you so much. I can't Absolutely. thank you enough. Let's get started. Let's get started. I think the record should show that uh, this is one of those uh, spontaneous uh, things that we always arrange whenever the president comes in to speak. So when the museum was renovated in 2016, um, we took a pretty novel approach. Mm -hmm. We wanted to throw the visitor into the 1960s. You know, normally the presidential library, have you been to any other presidential libraries? This is my first. Oh, Started at so the best, right? You picked a good one. <laughs> uh, so normally they, you know, he was born and then he did this and then he did this. We threw that concept out. You know, we wanted to throw people right into the 1960s and show them uh, the chaos and the turbulence of what was happening. So you, know, you had the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1963, you had JFK's assassination, um, Martin Luther King's assassination, Robert F. Kennedy's assassination, uh, race uh, riots and, and, and challenges. I mean, this, you know, this decade-long national conversation about race. Um, the Watts riots, the Vietnam War heats up in 1964 and 1965 with the Gulf of Tonkin incident. You know, by the time Nixon takes over, and wins the 1968 election, there's 550,000 Americans sent by Kennedy and Johnson to mm. Vietnam. Um, who would want to be president in 1968, right? I mean, that's incredible context because when he takes the reins, it was chaos. Total the, the, chaos. There's so much uh, trouble with, with the average American's life. And yeah. I mean, like with the Watts riots, it's incredible that you have this much turmoil. Mm -hmm. And so many of the voters who had voted Democrat see Nixon as, okay, maybe this guy could be the solution and vote for him. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, members of the Congress and members of the cabinet, I want to express my very deep appreciation to all of you who have come here to send us off on this historic mission. Wow, and Welcome. here we are. Here we are. Welcome to the Oval Office. So uh, this is just as President Nixon had it. Incredible, incredible. Yeah, so uh, Mrs. Nixon, the first lady, designed the color scheme in here, very 1970s. She uh, called it California blue and gold. The Nixons were Californians. Um, sort of, you know, minimalist decor. Nixon tended to use the Oval Office for f pretty formal occasions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, heads of state meetings and, and uh, photo opportunities and whatnot. He actually preferred to work in an office in the old executive office building. He called oh. it his hideaway. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, noted, noticed that he had the service flags. Um, so about two months ago, uh, Mike Pence was here. And I was uh, giving, I know he was a guest, Just on Ruthless, yeah. guest recently on the program. And uh, I was giving him a tour here in the Oval Office. And I pointed at the desk and I said that this is the Wilson desk. And this is what Nixon preferred to use. He says, interesting that he didn't use the Resolute desk. And he goes, by the way, that was my desk. And wow, said, really? Really? He said, yeah. He said, I used that same desk uh, when I was vice president. That, that is the desk that's in the vice president's office in the Capitol building. I mean, it's amazing. That the, I mean, this is just a perfect reproduction. I've been lucky enough to visit yeah. and see the Oval Office. I mean, this is just like being there. It's amazing. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the city of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. So this is the home in which President Nixon was born. Wow. And it's in its original location. So this was built by his father in 1912, and it was—it was a kit, apparently, built right? Built from a kit. Yeah, I was just about to say that. <laughs> uh, it was—you know your stuff. It was, uh, yeah, built from a from a kit, um, but we don't know which kit. Hmm. So uh, again, Yorba Linda was a sleepy little town, and 
you know, horses and buggies and farmland and whatnot. Um, interestingly, the chimney and the fireplace didn't come with the kit. <laughs> the, the, it wasn't uh, included. It was, it was an add-on. Uh, and, and his dad actually um, built it by hand. Wow. Yeah. So this is... Uh, Again, just like one of the greatest presidents in our history, like titan of such accomplishments around yeah. the world, born in this tiny home in the middle of nowhere yeah. and, and self-made to reach the pinnacle of, of, of greatness. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Our greatest need now is to reach beyond government, to enlist the legions of the concerned and the committed. What has to be done has to be done by government and people together or it will not be done at all. The lesson of past agony is that without the people we can do nothing. With the people we can do everything. So welcome to 1913. Wow. Here we are. Here I'm, we are. I, I can't believe it. So this is the house that the Nixons built and lived in, in its original location. Um, you can see everything in here is original. Wow. So wow. this is the actual dining room table that he and his brothers sat at. And we're, this is the table at which he said he learned how to debate. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is the piano that he learned how to play. He played five instruments. Amazing. Which is really- I, I had no idea. The, the man was, he really was a genius. I mean, he, 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 there's videos of him, you know, playing the piano, yeah. particularly in, in the White House. And he learned how to play on this one. He loved National Geographic. So he, he is- uh, That explains the foreign policy. Like, exactly, the that's whole what world. he said. Yeah. He said his, um, he would, when he was a boy, there'd be a fire going, and he'd take the National Geographic that he would borrow from his aunt, and he'd lay out here on the floor and read them. And um, <clears throat> then he writes in his memoirs that he would listen to the train whistle at night, because there was a train that went by, and he loved trains. And he said, I would dream of all the faraway places that I wanted to visit someday. Mm. So I mean, that's really what got him interested in visiting all these foreign countries, and then he was able to put that interest into practice as vice president. Incredible. So this is the room that Nixon and his brothers lived in. So this is not on the public tour. We opened this wow. up just for you. Uh, these are the beds that he, he and his, uh, his brothers would sleep in and they would sleep head to toe. So they'd sleep opposite, right? I mean, again, six people living in this house. I mean, and it is tiny. We can't even you know, stand up completely. And yeah, so like you can see how close he was with his brothers, right? Yeah. So the fact that two of them died Mm. very early, one when he was seven, and Nixon writes that that completely changed the character of the family. Um, and then his older brother, with whom he was very close, dies at 23 of tuberculosis. Mm. And so, yeah, this, the, the, the family makeup completely changed. And, um, you know, Nixon was really looked to as the second eldest, who's now the eldest, mm -hmm. as really the leader of the family. The question at issue is not whether Johnson's war becomes Nixon's war. The great question is, how can we win America's peace? So this is one of the actual presidential helicopters. Incredible. Yeah, it, it made up the fleet in the 1960s. So this entered service in 1961. Okay. Built by Sikorsky. Um, and so Presidents Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, and Ford flew on this helicopter. Um, President Nixon flew it on 181 missions, mostly up to Camp David and back, mm -hmm. or to Andrews and back. So this was the helicopter he took when he left the White House? That's right. The famous, this, this is, is, the this famous is it, one. right here. This is it, this is it. Is it possible, can I go up? And, Absolutely. Hey, I have to take the shot. You have to. It's incredible. You have to. Come check it out. Indeed, one of the saddest incidents that he's ever seen. There is the president waving goodbye. Can you hear the applause? I mean, like I said, I have to do it. This is just... This is where dreams come true. <laughs>